This is a presentation on stress, traumatization, and psychopathology, seen in terms of need thwarting and introjected internalization, an SDT perspective on the foundations of psychiatry. I gave the, uh, this presentation to the 8th International Self-Determination Theory Conference in Florida in 2023, and I do assume some familiarity with SDT. However, our topic here is psychiatry. Let's look at psychiatry and the roots of mental illness. So what are those roots? Well, they're largely ignored in psychiatry. Um, if you look it up in the manuals, um, it will often say etiology is unknown or it's unspecific, meaning that many kinds of factors may lead to this particular type of mental illness or, or disease. Uh, and the current view is really that that mental disease is some sort of biochemical dysfunction in the brain. The brain usually works well, but then sometimes it doesn't work well, and it has to do with molecules in the brain, and um, we may be able to treat your mental illness by adding some molecules or some uh, chemical substances, um, such that treatment uh, end up often merely suppressing symptoms rather than addressing the, uh, the underlying disease. Because what is that disease really? And how does it develop? That's the big question. Now, if we uh, consider development and ask, um, uh, what is a human development with uh, SDT? Um, we know from SDT that um, it is assumed here that people have potentials and vulnerabilities, potentials that things will go great in life and vulnerabilities that they might not. And um, those two extremes, if you will, uh, are the same as the, the bright and dark sides that is mentioned, that are mentioned in SDT, the bright and dark sides of the, of the human psyche, where <clears throat> the bright side, that, well, that's when psychological needs are met, when we experience autonomy and competence and relatedness and we flourish as human beings. We, uh, we uh, experience autonomous motivation and our regulations are autonomous and uh, events and experiences are well integrated to the self and we mature and, and grow as people in that process. Whereas the dark side of the human psyche, that happens when, when needs are ignored or they're thwarted and we don't get to experience autonomy and competence and relatedness and we languish as human beings. Uh, the regulation of our impulses and behavior is controlled um, and we experience also controlled motivation leading to a, a self that doesn't cohere very well. It's fragmented and dissociated and um, uh, our mind, if you will, uh, falls apart and goes to pieces. Um, so those are the two sort of extreme trajectories uh, with, the, of course, the many shades of gray uh, in between uh, those two. Now, uh, consider uh, development and stress, and, and let me give an overview of the argument I will make here, that stresses represent challenges to psychological needs, especially autonomy. So that's one way of conceiving of what a stress is. That's, when, that's, that's a challenge that is being posed to a person um, that, that threatens uh, to um, um, uh, not satisfy uh, psychological needs. That uh, if these challenges are not met, you won't have your needs for autonomy and competence and relatedness uh, met. That's one way of looking at, at stress. Because challenges, they must be mastered and integrated to the self. So anytime you, you meet an, an obstacle or a challenge in the environment, you try to overcome it, to address it, and to develop, to develop the skills necessary actually to deal with it. And if you extend your repertoire, well, that's when you grow and learn and mature as a person and your yourself is consolidated. <clears throat> um, however, this may not be the case. If challenges are not mastered, uh, psychopathology may uh, result. And SDT thus suggests that a, that a focus on, a, on the personal history of need frustration and introjected internalization, as it's called, is very important. So looking at that personal history, the etiology, if you will, of psychopathology, seen in terms of 
what is it that a person has been exposed to uh, in the previous uh, life. Uh, uh, that's, uh, that's important. So let's look at the stress and the stress response that is uh, covered in, uh, in much of the uh, research literature. Stress is often defined as uh, involving challenges that are overwhelming our resources uh, for coping. Um, likewise, the stress response uh, is what readies the organism for coping, and it's, it's usually uh, 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 seen in terms of HPA axis activation, that this axis of, uh, of uh, the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland, and the adrenal system, that if these three brain and endocrine centers are activated, they produce the stress hormones that will enable the organism to deal with the uh, impending threat or, or challenge. And that produces the arousal and alertness and vigilance required to, to deal with uh, difficult uh, challenges. Um, it is so that in our evolutionary past, the stresses that animals and, and uh, pre-human beings were uh, exposed to would fade in a matter of seconds or minutes, or the predator will simply uh, eat you. So that's how our a stress system has evolved to be downregulated and to return to normal uh, fairly quickly. However, modern civilization uh, is producing persistent stresses. There, there is traffic. There is a, a stranger, stranger, uh, st sorry, strange, menacing people in the street. There are all kinds of social comparisons from social media. All kinds of things that produces a state of hyper vigilance, where people are generally on their toes uh, because uh, the next threat uh, may come around the corner, and um, uh, many people are anxious uh, for what will happen uh, next. So, uh, what do you say? A small cat may actually be seen uh, as a tiger. Uh, and that uh, produces a fair amount of neurobiological uh, damage. Uh, research has indicated or produced evidence that uh, these things uh, happen in the brain, cortical thinning, uh, a shrinking amygdala, dendritic atrophy, shortened telomeres, uh, lots of um, evidence that uh, stress is really, really bad for our brains and, and nervous systems. So, so much so that we may develop complex PTSD or what's called developmental trauma disorder. And let's take a look at that. Um, well, those are really the lingering effect of, of persistent and overwhelming stresses. They leave a trace in the brain, if you will, when the brain and the body cannot downregulate after stress and get rid of the stress hormones and return the body to normal, if you will, when we are in a state of hyper vigilance on our toes uh, all the time. Um, and we know PTSD that's been well recognized for about 40 years. That's the one major experience that bends uh, our psychological nail. Um, but likewise, we may develop um, uh, evidence of trauma in a different manner, and that's what's called developmental trauma disorder, a disorder that arises from trauma uh, during human development, that is childhood and later also, where it is recognized now that, that 100,000 hits, some of them smaller, will equally bend the nail, and that often results from childhood maltreatment, the, uh, the uh, physical and sexual abuse that uh, many children are exposed to or even uh, physical and sorry, uh, verbal and emotional abuse, uh, loss and separation and uh, neglect and all these things that uh, kids may be exposed to, well, they may accumulate during a lifetime and express themselves as this particular developmental uh, trauma disorder. There was a famous study in the 90s uh, uh, called the Adverse Childhood Experiences where it is simply counted how many of 10 different major adverse childhood experiences people have been exposed to, and that correlates extremely well with um, problems later in life, uh, not only psychological and social, but also uh, somatic health problems uh, develop uh, very much in 
proportion to the number of adverse childhood experiences uh, people were exposed to. So the whole developmental history of every individual person is uh, extremely is extremely important uh, for uh, psychopathology later on. So let's uh, let's take a look at that. So one interesting study. Um, uh, uh, found that abused children are more sensitive to detecting anger in faces. And of course, well, that's not so strange because that's actually a very adaptive response. If you are a child who is very often abused by your caregivers, then you learn to uh, pick up the little cues in their faces, indicating that now they're about to be hit. Uh, or be, to be left or to be ignored. Well, anger becomes a very important uh, thing to be aware of and generally to be aware of things in the environment um, is very important for these kids and they're on their toes, they're on high alert uh, much of the time and that produces difficulties with emotion regulation. They can't calm down, they're anxious, uh, they're uh, alert uh, all the time. Emotion dysregulation, problems with uh, dealing with your emotions, has been uh, suggested. It's a, a trans diagnostic mechanism that links child maltreatment with psychopathology. So, if you're the kind of person who finds it very difficult to regulate your emotions, well, that may be something that uh, produces this bridge between having been exposed to abuse and so on in childhood and developing mental illness later on. And it's called a transdiagnostic mechanism because it goes beyond the diagnostic categories. And it seems to be very important in very many of the psychiatric diagnoses, uh, this uh, emotional dysregulation. Exposure to trauma in childhood um, confers a broad vulnerability to multiple types of psychopathology, says this uh, prominent researcher in the field, uh, Katie McLaughlin. And um, uh, these uh, different types of psychopathology include mood disorders, anxiety disorders, disruptive behavior, substance abuse, and psychotic disorders. So many kinds of psychopathology are are implicated in the results of emotion regulation, which may arise from child maltreatment and adverse experiences in uh, childhood. <clears throat> so, so um, um, SDT's perspective now is in terms of needs and integration to the self, uh, as I indicated, that um, overwhelming stresses and traumatizing experiences, well, they frustrate or thwart psychological needs. That's the perspective from SDT. What's wrong with stresses and trauma? Well, it's the fact that it doesn't provide the satisfaction of the experience for autonomy and competence and relatedness that are so important uh, to, um, to uh, human flourishing. So, so in this view, stresses are challenging experiences that a person needs to internalize. Um, so, um, Things need to be absorbed and understood and handled well. And, and the question now is, are these stresses, are they mastered and harmonized within the self in such a way that the self is transformed in this process and the person grows and learns and develops um, new skills and a, a higher repertoire and a, a maturity and psychological uh, maturation? Uh, is that possible? Uh, are these uh, stresses integrated uh, to the self um, uh, such that they uh, help a person build up a stronger and more stable and flexible and resilient self. Well, then these challenges will lead to mental health. If, on the other hand, uh, the stresses uh, that a person experiences are constantly of the overwhelming, the um, extremely difficult to master uh, kind, then um, life's challenges 
as they're put to that person fail to integrate and internalization is interjected rather than integrated. That is the, uh, the experiences that are such a person is exposed to the challenges never become a part of the self, uh, but will be uh, interjected that is thrown into the person and sit there as, um, as um, fixed ideas or um, what mother and father always said I should do and uh, uh, guilt and shame and uh, uh, interjects that are pushing the self around and uh, that lead to uh, a great internal uh, conflict, all these voices and a bad conscience and uh, um, persona that is are experienced within the self because the self does not uh, cohere and is not well integrated. Uh, so <clears throat> um, in a sense, life's experiences remain alien psychic fragments that are not being put together in a in a self that is actually on top of things and and coheres and and this is very much what is associated with mental ill being or may even be the essence of mental ill being this pile of um, of non integrated um, introjects psychic fragments that fail to cohere uh, during uh, development <clears throat> so uh, this is a SDT's proposal for an etiology for psychiatry, that is for a perspective on what are the causes of, of human illness, where does it come from, uh, how does a, 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 a sum of a butterfly uh, uh, grow and develop. Well, humans seek to master and integrate challenges, and that is, of course, the essence of development, that we can integrate the experiences and challenges that we meet uh, during life. And that may lead to two extremes, either integration and unity, and we associate that with mental health. That's the bright side of human psychology, or it may lead at the other end of the spectrum to fragmentation and dissociation that is mental ill-being, and that was the dark side of the human uh, psychology. And this is what we often see in modern civilization, where there are so many stresses that lead people to hyper anxiety and trauma and maybe eventually to mental illness and psychopathology. Um, so in that sense, psychopathology is, is normal development gone awry. It's not a mysterious disease that pops up out of nowhere like a machine uh, functions perfectly well for 20 years and suddenly it, uh, it stops functioning well and we don't understand why. Well, um, when people are mentally ill, it's, it's a result of a long process that could have gone better, but didn't go so well altogether. Uh, because every challenge uh, tickles a human vulnerability. And if the challenges are too great, if they're overwhelming, well, then we become extremely vulnerable to ill health and ill mental health. So in this sense, <clears throat> STT's etiology for psychiatry can be summed up like this, that, that mental ill health grows from frustrated and thwarted needs during development and early life, as well as from introjected internalization of life's challenges and experiences. So, so mental illness is not some inexplicable dysfunction, but it's a natural, or natural in quotes, uh, um, it's a natural expression of human vulnerabilities in the life course. Natural in the sense that things don't always go perfectly well uh, during a development, that we live in social conditions under economic inequality and oppression maybe, and uh, all kinds of socio-political circumstances that do not afford optimal uh, opportunities for human development. And if people are so uh, stressed and um, exposed to um, uh, starvation and uh, abuse and uh, civil war, all kinds of calamities that may impinge on a human person, well, that uh, will, of course, lead to some kind of ill health and mental illness as well. And, of course, the whole uh, purpose of, uh, of uh, socioeconomic structures and parenting and schooling and so on is to uh, is to prevent this from happening so so preventing and as well as treating mental illness what we need to do is to support the needs the needs for autonomy and competence 
and relatedness and ensure that the internalization that we're giving kids will lead to uh, the integration of the uh, challenges and experiences that they uh, are exposed to during life such that they will have a self that coheres, that integrates things and that is continually uh, transformed in, in learning and development and grows up to be a, a healthy uh, human being that has realized uh, his or her uh, potentials uh, for uh, flourishing. So um, this was the literature uh, that I cited in my slides. And um, thank you for your attention. This was stress, traumatization, and psychopathology seen in terms of need thwarting and introjected internalization and SDT perspective on the foundations of psychiatry. Thank you.